In this video, let's talk about views computed properties. Mustache expressions are very convenient, but they're meant for simple operations. Putting too much logic in a mustache expression is a bad practice. It makes the mustache expression bloated and hard to maintain. Let's look at the example in VS Code. Let me create a git branch for this view concept so it will be easier for you to review the code later. Git branch computed properties. Git switch computed properties. OK. So please note that we're now on branch computed properties. And let me copy and paste the starter code. In this code demo, here in the script, we defined an array of users, John Smith, Tom Doe, and Franklin Wong. John Smith and Tom Doe are not active. We also define a method called sort users by age. So if we click this button, we're going to sort them by age. And here in the template, we use v-4 to iterate through the users in the array. And we print their index, ID, name, age. And here we either deactivate or restore based on their current status. If a user is inactive, the CSS class inactive will be effective. So we have the name in red, and there is a line through. Here is the inactive CSS class. OK, so it's a pretty simple example. Next, let's try to calculate the number of active users. First, let me refresh. In this case, it's one, only frankly one. And we're going to print the number of active users here. You're like, that's easy. I know mustache notation. And I can define JavaScript expressions there. Let's compute the number of active users in the array users. Users dot, we can use filter. And we're going to filter out inactive users, but keep the active users. So user dot is active. OK, and then here dot length. OK. As you can see, the number of active users is 1. Now, what if I restore John Smith? Now it's 2. If I restore Tom Doe, now it's 3. And I can deactivate all of them. Now there are zero active users. So far, so good. Then several weeks later, when you read this code again, you need to stare at this line, line number 5, for a few seconds, and then realize, ah, it is computing the number of active users. The problem here is we kind of coupled computing logic with the UI. And this problem is made worse if you use the same mustache expression in maybe multiple places in the template. It becomes hard to maintain. Visual solution is computed properties. So let's refactor this with computed properties. Let's cut this. We still need this logic, but we're not going to define it in the template. Instead, let's create a computed property in the script. Let me split my editor. And here is the syntax. Computed. And it takes a function as an argument. And this function is going to return a value. And that value is the one we just cut. Now let me paste. So this computed method takes a function that returns a value. In this case, the number of active users. We need to save the result. Let number of active users. By the way, let me scroll up. Make sure you import computed from view. The extension in VS Code will import it automatically, but just in case it didn't. If you are careful enough, you will find a problem here. Recall that this users, let me scroll up here, 
is a ref object. In Vue.js, for convenience, refs are automatically unwrapped when used in templates. So there's no problem with using users dot filter here. But if you want to use the ref object inside the script, you cannot use users dot filter directly. Instead, you have to use users dot value dot filter. Because users dot value will return us this array. Well, users is just the ref object. Then how do we use this computed property, number of active users? It turns out that it is also a ref object. So let me copy this, and we can use it directly inside the mustache notation. Behind the scenes, this will be automatically unwrapped. So we don't have to use dot value here. Now let me refresh. It's working. Let me do restore, restore, deactivate, deactivate, deactivate. It works fine. So number of active users here is called the computed property. To prove what I just said, let's print number of active users. Dot log number of active users. Refresh. And here I'm going to press F12. And I do not want to print the value, just the ref. OK. So as you can see, number of active users is an instance of computed ref import. So basically, it is just a ref import. You can use it in mustache notation, but when you use in the script, you have to use dot value. So like this. OK, so now it is 1. All right, so let me do this and close this. In Vue.js, a computed property automatically tracks its reactive dependencies. In this case, users is the dependency of this computed property. Vue is smart enough. It is aware that the computation of this number of active users depends on the users array right here. So it will automatically recompute the number of active users when the users array changes. And the good thing about using computer properties here is that you can use this computer property in multiple places, but we only define it once. So it's easy to maintain the logic. Let me show you another use case of computed properties. Now I want to add a button to toggle between showing all users and showing only active users. You're like, this is easy. I can use the users.filter method to do this. But remember from the last video, the filter function of an array is a non-mutating method. It returns a brand new array. You will lose the original array of the users. We don't want to do that. We want to keep the original array intact while only providing a filtered version of that array, like active only. And in this scenario, I recommend you use a computed property to create such a filtered version of the array users. Let's work on it. First, let's create a button. And the text on the button is hide in active. So when I press hide in active, both John Smith and Tom Doe will be gone. And then when I click this button again, John Smith and Tom Doe will come back. That is, show all. So apparently, this is a toggle. When we define a toggle button, we need a Boolean variable to control the toggling behavior. So let's scroll down. And here, let's define a Boolean variable called hide in active. And by default, it is false. So when the page loads, we show all users. OK, let me scroll up. So for here, at click, hide in active is equal to not hide in active. OK, all right, here we have done this several times. We're going to use a mustache notation. If hide inactive is true, 
show all. Otherwise, let's cut this and put it here. All right. So right now it is highly active. If I click, then it show all. Click again, highly inactive. Very good. Next, let's implement the functionality. When I click hide inactive, only frankly one is there. Otherwise, everybody is there. Let's define another computed property. Computed. This computed property will be called when hide inactive changes from false to true or true to false. So if hide inactive dot value is true, users dot value dot filter user dot is active. Otherwise, returns users dot value. So if hide inactive is true, then this computed property will return a filtered version of the users, only active users. Otherwise, it will return the entire users array. Then we need to assign this computed property to a variable. Let's call this filtered users. Then let's use this one in the v-4, right here. Instead of going through every single user in the users array, we're going to use the v-4 to go over it in these filtered users. Remember, if hide inactive is true, this is the filtered version. Otherwise, this is the original users array, like right here. So let me refresh. Right now, inactive is false. So filtered users has all the users. Now, if I click hide inactive, the filter users only has one user, frankly one, who is active. Okay, so let me split this again. Right here. And here I'm gonna press F12 and show you what happened in View Dev Tools. Okay, let me refresh. Now take a look. As you can see right now, when hide inactive is false, users and filter users are the same. If I click hide inactive, this will make hide inactive true. And in that case, the original array users does not change. It still has three users. Some are active, some are inactive but the filtered version of the users only has one active user. That is frankly one, here. And in the v-4, instead of using users, we're using a computed property, the filtered users. This is a very typical use case of the computed properties, is that we display a filtered version of an array without actually mutating or resetting the original data. Let's create one more computed property for the content of this button. Now, as you can see, it is OK to write this ternary conditional expression in mustache notation. But again, we kind of coupled the logic with the UI. So it's recommended that we're going to convert this to a computed property as well. So let me cut this and go down here, maybe before this. Let's call this toggle button name is equal to, and here we're going to use the computed property again, paste. All right. Now, don't forget that here we're going to use dot value because in the script, you have to use a ref dot value. Let me copy the name and put it in here. All right, so it works as well. So now the template becomes much intuitive and easier to read. We don't have very complex computing logic. All the logic, they're encapsulated 
in those computed properties. And it is easy to read and easy to maintain. I'm sure at this point, many students will have this question. It seems like the computed property is like a method. So what's the difference between a computed property and a method? Or let me ask you this question. If you didn't know computed properties, could you still implement this functionality while keeping the code nice and clean? Sure, we can just use methods because you can also invoke a method in a mustache notation, right? Fine, let's do that and compare them. And let's only use this one, number of active users. So here we use the computer property to do this, but actually I can also use a method. Let, let's call this method compute number of active users is equal to a function. And let me copy this, put it here. The logic in the computed property and in this method call is exactly the same. So here we need to return it. Now to make sure you know which one gets called, so here, let me add some console logs. So here I'm gonna print computed property. And here, I'm going to type, this is a method call. So in the script, I defined a computed property and a method. Both have the same purpose, is to compute number of active users. They have the exact same logic, and let's compare these two. So here, we also need to return it. Don't forget that, because now we're using the curly braces. Console log return, console log return, exact same logic. Right here. Okay. So let me copy this line, number of active users. This is the computed property. Copy, paste, paste. And then paste, paste, paste. So the first three were using computed properties. Then the last three, then we're supposed to use the method calls compute number of active users. All right. All right, perfect. So you see that the first three ones are the results of the computed properties here. The last three ones here are the results of the method calls, right? It looks like they're the same. Now to make this more obvious, let me add some uh, prompts here. Those are computed property. And here, they are method call. Let me refresh this page. I want you to tell me, what does the console print? In other words, how many times do we see computed property? And how many times do we see method call? It looks like each of them gets called three times, right? So here, one, two, three, one, two, three. So a valid guess is that there are three computed properties printed and three method calls printed. All right, so let's see. Press F12. What happened? It looks like even though we use the same computed property three times, the computed property is only invoked and executed once. But for method, that's not surprising. Every time you call method, it gets executed. So it looks like computer property is smarter. It remembers things. So the difference between computed properties and method calls is that computed properties are cached based on their reactive dependencies. A computed property will only reevaluate or recompute when some of its reactive dependencies have changed. Well, in this case, the user's array is unchanged, right? This means as long as the user's array has not changed, multiple access to the same computed property number of active users will immediately return the previously computed result without having to run this function again. Beautiful, right? What if we change? So let me clear this and restore John Smith. What happened? 
the computer property is invoked, you know, because we have another active user. But it only calculates once. For the second time and the third time of using the same computer property, it simply just used the cache value. Vue is smart enough to say that, okay, I'm not going to waste computing resources on this. This is a very good feature. But for method call, every time you call it, it will not cache the result. Refresh. Now, what if I sort users by age? The computer property is invoked again, even though the content of the users didn't change, but the order of those users changed. That's why the computer property was invoked. All right, next, let's apply what we just learned to our Hogwarts shopping cart project. It's Hogwarts shopping cart time. Let's use what we just learned, the computer properties, to compute subtotal, shipping estimate, tax estimate, and order total. OK, finally, we're here on this part of the shopping cart. Here, we need to define four computed properties. So let's define the first computed property, subtotal. Let subtotal computed property. Make sure you import the computed method from view. It takes a function as an argument. Shopping cart items dot reduce accumulator each item. We should return accumulator plus item dot price times item dot quantity. And it starts with zero. All right, then let's test this subtitle. Copy this and scroll here. Order summary. So right now, this number is hard coded. Now remember this number 13900. All right, and this number matches the hard coded one. And let's continue. Let's compute the shipping estimate. Shipping estimate computed. Here, to make things easier, if the subtotal is greater than, say, $10,000, the shipping cost is 100. Otherwise, 50. So basically, this is the logic to compute the shipping estimate. And in this very simple example, there are only two shipping costs, 100 or 50. Depends on the subtotal. Now, continue. Let tax estimate. Well, you have to pay tax, right? Computed property. For example, it is subtotal times 0.08, 8% sales tax. And finally, we're going to compute total. This is easy, right? We just need to add up the previous three computed properties. Subtotal plus shipping estimate plus Tax estimate. Then let's use those computed properties in the template. Okay, so this is the shipping estimate. And here is the tax. Estimate. And here is the total. Make sure you remember this number. We're going to check if we compute it correctly. 15112. All right, it looks like we're doing good. Next, let me show you the magic. I will press 
plus and minus, and take a look at the order summary here. It's changing, right? Okay, now I'm going to click minus. When subtotal is under $10,000, the shipping estimate goes from 100 to 50. So look again, if I plus, now it's over 10,000. Now we have $100 as shipping estimate. Now, can I remove one? For sure. Okay, now here I'm gonna reduce it to zero. Well, this is a little bug, right? Even though you don't purchase anything, we're gonna still charge you shipping estimate. Yes, you have to pay shipping estimate. Okay, now let's go back to learn view three with Binyang project and do a quick summary there. Computed properties allow you to define a property that is calculated based on other data properties in your view instance or component. When any of the dependencies change, view automatically recalculates the computed properties and updates the DOM accordingly. Computed properties can be accessed just like any ref objects, like here. It is important to remember that computed properties should only perform pure computation and please make it be free of side effects. What do I mean? For example, don't mutate other state, make asynchronous requests, or mutate the DOM inside a computed property. Think of a computed property as declaratively describing how to derive a value based on other values. Computation only, no side effects. Its only responsibility should be computing and returning the computed value. So don't modify anything, don't make async requests, and don't mutate the DOM inside a computed property. In the next video, we'll talk about view watchers. You'll find that the view watchers are kind of similar to the computed properties, but there are differences. In the next video, we'll discuss how to perform side effects in reaction to state changes with the view watchers. So in the end, let me push this branch to GitHub. Computed properties. Okay. In the next video, let's talk about view watchers. See you there.